you ever thought about completely changing your life? Yep, a few times. Can you say? Maybe your career, doing something that you've always dreamt of doing. So difficult to take that leap at times, isn't it? Well, for one South Yorkshire lady, that dream has become a reality. Mum of three and busy nutrition expert Jennifer Bonkup from Penniston took the leap of faith from fitness to film and all in the middle of a global pandemic. Hello, you. Hello, you are right? I'm marvellous, darling. I really, really am. I'm just as... I love these kind of stories, Jen. These are right my cup of tea, these are. <laughs> now, how long have you wanted to make this change in your life for? Um, well, I've always wanted to be an actor. It's it's what, when I was doing GCSE drama at Meadowhead School in Sheffield, my teacher was like, yeah, yeah, you can do it. And I went off to London. I was, you know, that was my dream. But, you know, I, I just thought that's always what it was going to be, a dream. So to to make that change now in my late 30s and to get back into it, it, it you just have to do these things I just had this decision in my head I'm going to do it and I did it there's something I love this there's something that happens I think in our late 30s you know <laughs> that makes you just go do you know what sausages to it I'm doing it and and then and so you should because if you don't you just all oh, it'll always be a dream yeah absolutely and I've, I've sacrificed so much because I'm, I'm a single mom. I've got three kids. Two of my children have additional needs. So I sacrificed so much for, for everybody else. And I got to a point in my life where I was like, the, at the moment, there is nothing here for me. And I, did, I sort of inadvertently, uh, whilst I was running my um, nutrition and fitness business online, just to fit in around the busyness of family life. Mm. And it was it was really successful. I was I was doing really well. I kind of inadvertently fell back into doing extras work. And I saw that as like a hobby that paid. You know, you got your dinners on set and it was kind of fun. But I inadvertently by chance got a cast role just because I looked like the person in this docudrama. Amazing. And then just by this lucky series of events, the universe seemed to put me on the track of saying, you need to get back to doing what you always wanted to do. So I made the decision that I'm going to pursue this. And then um, I got uh, given an opportunity to be the permanent stand-in and double for Genevieve O'Reilly on Tin Star 3 that was filming in Liverpool at the end of 2019. And that was working full, full-time for four months. Uh, on a on a big production TV set, and I got so much experience, and I learned so much from from that, and that was really the massive turning point. And that credit, combined with my previous credits and um, the docudrama, that sort of gave me the launch pad to get onto um, a casting page called Spotlight, which is that's the clincher to be an actor. If you if you can't get on Spotlight, that that is really difficult. Um, so once you've got on Spotlight, that is then the kind of acting world as your oyster. So I got on Spotlight, I got an agent, an acting agent, and that was all at the end of um, 2020 that all that change happened. So that was again in the middle of this pandemic. Amazing. Um, and yeah, so since then I've I've been... I've been working, but I know your pal as well, Theo, Theo King Garvey, that I know you've interviewed over his Unit 11 film. Oh, I love Theo. He's oh. amazing. Yes, I do. Yeah. You, have you been yeah. in his things as well? Well, I am in his latest <sighs> film that I know he mentioned when you interviewed him the other day. Yes. Um, yes. I, I played the lead in his latest oh, film. Oh, my goodness. Wendy and the Wendy me. Amazing. <laughs> Can I just tell you something, right? You said you've said a couple of things that I was like, "There it is." You what? You mentioned the universe one. That's like a uh, tick box for me. And yeah. it, the, someone told me this saying the other day, and I thought that absolutely amazing is look is what happens when opportunity meets talent, and that yeah. is what happened. And I, I just think, oh, you're doing it. You're smashing it, mate. Absolutely you smashing have, it. Yeah, you have to take whatever opportunities come your way because you, you're not going to be handed things on a plate. You have to, the, the slightest smidgen of an opportunity, you have to like kind of make it into everything you can possibly make out of it. So, um, I mean, I've been lucky enough, there's a film that I'm in that's just been released on Amazon Prime called The Scourge and it's a horror film and it's, Brilliant. It was written by a guy called Matt Blakey and he plays uh, the leader as well. So 
I'd say check that out um, if you like horror. It's a low budget, um, so don't expect Hollywood, but it's getting some fantastic reviews on Amazon Prime. And um, I turn into a, a bit of a zombie. And that's not, you know, I'm not giving anything away because when you see the thumbnail on Amazon Prime, there's my face there looking rather scary. Amazing. So, um, I'm not giving anything away there, but check it out. There's an amazing um, bunch of cast in that. Uh, Daniel Bowker, he um, he meets a um, a lovely end there, um, <laughs> and um, yeah, it's it's just taking all those opportunities and doing the best that you can with them, making it work for you. And when when I'm acting, it's it's everything I've ever wanted to do. So you know, when I was running the fitness business, it was great. I loved helping people. Um, but it just wasn't quite exactly me. It was doing what fitted in with the family, doing what fitted in around everyone else around me. But now I've found my original passion. It's like I'm me again. Mm-hmm. And I've found this new lease of life. So if there's anyone who, who's like listening to this and just thinks it, it's too late, it's never too late to get back into your passion. Just just do it for fun and just see what happens. Because that's ultimately what I did. I got, I started doing extras work for fun and it led me down this path that the universe sort of took me on. But now I'm, I'm in films and there's, there's a feature film that I filmed uh, in Whitby with Obverse, Ob, Obverse Films, uh, which is kind of a sci-fi film. I have no idea when that's going to be out because that's, it's, I think it's being pitched to the American film market, but um, that's called The Colour of Everything. And so there's, there's various projects that I'm working on and I'm constantly self-taping, auditioning, getting put in front of casting directors for big TV shows. So I'm getting asked to audition and so I'm just waiting for that lucky break to get on something on your TV screen that's going to hopefully um, get me more work. So I'm just plugging away. You are doing amazing. Do you know, my other half's going to be listening to this now, right? Thinking, oh, no. Oh, no. You're going to have poked the tiger with measures because acting's always been a bit of my thing as well, you know, and I've not done it for so long. And I'm listening to you Mm. now and I'm thinking, she's right, you know. She's right. It's never too blooming late. She's right. I need to get back into that. The thing is, you can create your own stuff. Because through the pandemic, there's been reduced opportunity. I actually wrote my own piece uh, with the help of a local producer who um, runs a company called NL Films, Hugh Man Adamson. He put me in touch um, with a whole host of team of local creatives, amazingly. And I, I wrote my own film called, a uh, short film called The Party, which is a mashup of like motherland style meets Alan Bennett talking heads. Right, I want to be in and this. I want, can I be in this? This sounds it's amazing. Done. It's done. I've done it. It's, oh. done. it's done. It's been submitted to film festivals. I've already won an award at an international film festival for Best Actress. It's been selected as a semi-finalist at another film festival. I'm waiting to hear about other places. Um, I think the Spirit of Independence Film Festival have said that they are looking at screening it at Abedal Picture House. Amazing. And Rob Sperenza, who's a um, local creative at uh, Sheffield, who's looking at screening it at the showroom theatre. I mean, it's just a three-minute short. It's just a little thing that I put together because I needed to create my own stuff. And so I did it. I just thought, right, I'm just doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are you just that girl like this. I mean, you know, if I can't find it, I'll make one myself. Why yeah. the heck not? I, I know that feeling, darling. I know that feeling all too well. I bet your babies. Are, how old are your children? Uh, my eldest is fourteen. My middle son is twelve, and my daughter will be eleven in a couple of weeks. I bet they're absolutely buzzing off it, you know, because when when oh, when no. they see no, mum, no, no. oh, they're not. No, they're no. not. Are they, no, are no, they no. cringing. I'm so emba- oh, it's, it's, it's embarrassing. <laughs> I think I think my daughter watched half of the film on Amazon and said, "You're all right. It's okay." But my middle son was like, "I am not watching that. It's so cringy." My eldest watched a little bit of the zombie stuff and was like, "Yeah, okay." But no, no, they can't. They cringe like, "Oh, I've got an embarrassing mom. Please don't tell anyone. Please don't tell any of my friends' moms that you're doing it." I'm like, "Okay, I won't tell anyone. Secretly mate, telling everyone." When you when you're bringing in the big books and you're flying them all out to Hollywood, they'll change their mind, mate. I'm telling you right now, what is the dream? What's the ultimate dream? Um, well, when you say that, I, like Spain is definitely not, you know, I don't want to do that. I, I Last year, I went to go and see the Handlebars, which are a local, um, well, not local, actually, they're a national uh, travelling sort of theatre company. And they perform, uh, they were performing uh, outdoor theatre of uh, Romeo and Juliet Shakespeare. And they just go around on their bikes with everything, all their props. And it's amazing. Like when my kids are growing up, I would love to do something like that. I, as long as I can afford to pay my bills and live comfortably from 
performing as an actor. That's my goal. I wow. don't care about anything else because it's just, that's all I want to do. It's going to happen, sweetheart. I can see it. Will you keep in touch with us and let us know how you're Definitely. going on? Because I want to be... And how, I know you're on you're on all of the uh, social media platforms. Oh, yeah. um, so how can people find you? Because I think people will want to follow yeah. you now. Yeah, I'm uh, on Twitter and Instagram, Jembel13. I've got a Facebook page, Jennifer Bullcock. It's 1L Bullcock. Yes. And um, I've actually... I could ask a huge favour, actually. So uh, I've, I've got my short film, The Party in um, a film festival which is um, you can actually buy tickets for and watch it and vote for it and if I get enough votes it'll be screened at Pinewood Studios so uh, amazing so there's a link on my Facebook page which I've got like pinned on my Facebook page <laughs> so if, if anyone wants to support us the Sheffield actor please go along I think the tickets are about £10 which I know is a lot so fair enough if you can't afford that just share it if, I'd be grateful for just a share um, but I, yeah, found I found you. I found you. I'm sharing it. I'm doing it as we talk, my darling. Oh, you're a star. Oh, you are more than welcome. Listen, it's lovely to talk to you. Keep in touch with us and keep going, sweetheart. You're doing yeah. amazing. You should be so Thank proud you. of yourself. You're welcome. That is actress Jennifer Bullcock from Penniston, who's a mum of three, and she switched from fitness and nutrition to becoming an actress. She's a force, is she not?